Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, folks, uh, wherever you're joining us today for this uh, Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar. Uh, my name is Alex Pena. I'll be the main presenter um, with the help of my uh, colleague, Naman Marsawala, who will be moderating the session. Um, today, we're a little bit uh, shorthanded in a sense. Uh, I think that with the flu outbreak that <laughs> has been affecting many of us and our coworkers, um, the same has kind of made its way to Autodesk. Um, kind of fitting, though, hopefully we can... Um, uh, in a sense, this session doing troubleshooting tips and tricks will keep your computer from getting sick and um, keep you up and running when uh, these tough times are going through. Um, just to get a, a better look at uh, the two folks today that will be presenting you, as I mentioned, my name is Alex Pena. I'm a product support specialist out of the Boston office. Um, uh, my colleague, Nauman, who's an Autodesk expert elite um, out of the uh, Westchester, Cincinnati area of Ohio. Um, he's usually found in the forums, supplying uh, plenty of answers to folks who usually tuning into these. Um, so we, we always like to have him all around. His advice is always great. And um, if you do have any questions, feel free to throw them into our questions or into the chat. And um, Norman will try his best to uh, answer them as quickly as possible. Oftentimes, he'll supply links to uh, websites or articles that are public facing that you can have for reference uh, material. Um, as with most of these sessions, before we get started, we always want to let you know, um, as just mentioned, leave the questions in the chat window. We'll definitely answer them, and if there are some that he can't come up with on the spot there, we'll try to kind of bring them up on a Q&A session after the fact. Um, the session will be recorded, um, uh, so no worries on if you can't catch the entire thing or if you have coworkers that can't make it. Um, it will be placed in our... Uh, YouTube playlist on AutoCAD, Build Your AutoCAD IQ on YouTube channel. Um, if you're not following us yet, feel free to definitely send a follow. You get access to tons of material, things that have been previously presented, um, different, anything and everything you can think of within AutoCAD or AutoCAD LT um, is basically available if you want to either brush up on your skills or something that you're not familiar with. Um, links are available in the registration reminder, the post webinar survey and the chat window, so um, there's no shortage of different ways to access that content. Um, we want to make it as readily available for you folks. Um, just to kind of get into the webinar series here, I'll kind of give you some upcoming topics. We'll have the Learn AutoCAD 50 in 50 minute session next month, um, followed by the new features in AutoCAD 2019, which is usually a large draw for folks. Um, that one will be presented by our KDE, Knowledge Domain Expert. Um, very well known in these sessions as Volker. Um, he uh, will kind of go through any of the new things that uh, you can be found with AutoCAD 2019, how you can use them on your day-to-day -day basis. Um, after that, another popular uh, session which we have is Dynamic Blocks. Um, and uh, I believe the Victoria will be the one that kind of presents that. She's presented it the last couple of years and um, usually does a great job of letting folks know how to kind of um, implement these dynamic blocks on your relatable uh, facts is what she tries to go off of, things that people can relate to on a day-to-day -day that might um, benefit them. Uh, another interesting part to the series that we're trying to incorporate um, and something that uh, I'll be spearheading um, going forward is creating screencasts or shorter content um, based off of these webinar topics. So a lot of the times previously you would have to tune in for an hour or so to kind of uh, get this information. What we're going to try to do is um, break these down into smaller, smaller digestible uh, content. And um, these will be found on our Autodesk Knowledge Network site. Um, so shortly after this webinar is completed, we'll post it on our YouTube channel. But um, hopefully within uh, the next couple of weeks, we'll have uh, smaller content that goes into each one of the portions covered today and um, an expansive look at the topic. Um, so that way, if you, if you don't have the time to invest uh, for an hour-long session, you can hopefully get that in um, smaller, smaller bites. Uh, so that's definitely something to look forward to. Um, we, as mentioned before, we have a link here to the Build Your AutoCAD uh, webinar playlist and uh, a bunch of helpful links uh, uh, off to the right there. We also do like supplying um, getting started, as uh, oftentimes we do have new folks that attend these. Um, we do want to supply them a, a kind of a, a place to start if they don't know um, where to start as far as AutoCAD, what to do, how to, how to get it downloaded, if they have any questions. Um, ways to troubleshoot, and um, we'll cover some of that today. But if you're looking for system requirements, any of that, we would like to supply those links ahead of time. So any of these are available to you as well. And before we get started on the topics being covered, as always, we always like to run a couple polls just to see what, where folks, uh, what kind of audience we have. Um, and I'll do that right now. 
So the first one that uh, we normally like to throw out, is this your first uh, webinar? A lot of the times, as mentioned, we, we do have frequent flyers who come back every time, which we definitely appreciate your, your, your presence. Uh, as I say, your presence is a present. But um, for the folks who are here for the first time, almost done here with about 81% voted, um, uh, we definitely want to welcome you. Uh, this is something that we hope uh, you can learn some new tricks. Um, new features, new new anything. Uh, as with anything, we get kind of caught up on the day to day, um, what our job requires. But um, there are certain things that we kind of forget about, or things and within the program that we want to learn more about. And hopefully, these uh, webinars will help you do that. What I'll do is close this one out, and I'll share the results. So it looks like about uh, uh, eighty nine percent of us uh, have been here before. So welcome back. And for the eleven percent that this is your new your first webinar, welcome back or if you, uh, I know that we had to re-register a lot of folks, but um, uh, welcome to the webinar. Hopefully you do learn some things. Now just a couple more here. Uh, which AutoCAD application do you folks uh, end up using? This one today will kind of focus in on um, features within AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT 2018. But um, for the folks who are using Macs or anyone who might be using a different um, uh, version of AutoCAD, a lot of these features will be available and um, they will be able to kind of uh, cross-platform cross in, in, in using um, most of these things. Uh, so I'll let this one kind of go for a little bit longer here. And we'll close this one out and share the results. So it seems like uh, AutoCAD for Windows is the, the main AutoCAD uh, LT for Windows the other. Um, that kind of goes par for the course. A lot of the folks are using Windows, um, but uh, as I mentioned, if you were for whatever reason using Mac, that is something that we could um, try to accommodate with these features as well. And just one more. Um, a lot of the times you want to know which version folks are using. I know that with the new subscription licensing, a lot of folks have access to 2018 to 2015 at the moment. Um, once the 2019 releases, that obviously gets bumped down a year, so um, 2016 and 2019. But um, just to see where folks are, and uh, uh, as for us, we always like to use the latest and greatest. Um, a lot of the times, we do supply updates, and um, a lot of those updates geared toward new improvements, but also um, legacy issues, things that have been known for a while that um, we haven't been able to kind of mitigate within certain uh, program versions. Um, so with the new ones, they always try to target a decent amount of those issues. If you aren't up on the 2018 version yet, I definitely highly recommend it. Um, there have already been a couple updates released for the version, um, which uh, we've had great, great uh, feedback on. So I'll close this poll and I'll share the results. Uh, it seems about 62% of us are on the 2018 version, um, but the so the majority of us are definitely on the latest and greatest, but for the folks in 16 and 17, maybe you'll see uh, something in this webinar that might in, entice you to move up. If not, um, we definitely uh, are, are great for going on with those versions. Um, nothing wrong with it at all. Alrighty, so I'll just hide that result here and we'll continue on. Uh, as I mentioned previously, I, this will be a one-man show, so hopefully you folks don't get uh, tired of my voice. <laughs> um, the, we have had a, a few folks that were sick um, who were going to present my uh, part of this um, webinar with me, so I'll definitely try my best to keep uh, everything intact and um, get through everything as I'd hope. But um, if I don't, you can always leave feedback for us. Uh, we love hearing where things we can improve or different topics or um, anything anything that comes to your mind about the webinar, whether it's structure or anything like that. Feel free to get back to us on the, on the webinar survey. We do read through those. Um, if there are any questions that you think of after the fact um, that you didn't necessarily think of when um, we're going on during the session or something that's completely unrelated, feel free to send us a message and um, we, we do try to get back to folks as soon as possible. Um, I know that I, I monitor that email alias very, um, very frequently just to make sure that everyone is answered. So um, just to kind of go over today's topics, uh, we'll go through uh, cleaning AutoCAD drawings, um, restoring from backup files, auto saves and recover, um, using drawing viewers, and uh, just a few tips if we do have some time about how to kind of do things more efficiently. Um, this webinar, in a sense, is geared toward helping folks um, troubleshoot their own issues. A lot of times we get um, uh, a bunch of issues that come in into the technical support kind of uh, spectrum, and a lot of things could be mitigated by just knowing a little bit more about what could be causing them and ways that you can mitigate these. And, and, and 
just um, cleaning out AutoCAD drawings can cause a huge performance increase. So we'll go through a bunch of ways how to do that. And um, a lot of the times, some of these, it might be an unrelated issue, something like, oh, my hatch is taking a very long time to, to actually um, set in. And uh, why, why is that happening? It could just be that the file itself is corrupted or there's just um, unnecessary information in there. And going through and clearing these out would be a very quick way to um, clean up the drawing and kind of remove that as an option when you do contact us. Like, hey, I've already attempted these steps. Um, they didn't work. But... Uh, so that way we know where, where to pick up. And a lot of it, uh, you might end up seeing that ends up solving the issue for yourself. So what I'll do now is switch over to the AutoCAD. Just give me a second here and alrighty. So the, as mentioned previously, this will be kind of troubleshooting. And um, this is just a, a site drawing here, a site plan that I have. Um, just a random drawing doesn't necessarily apply to anyone or anything like that, but it is a fairly large file. Um, has a few different layouts, so um, different things that could affect the performance within the, the, the program itself. And the first command that I'd like to go into, um, which is one that uh, uh, folks probably know of, but um, we want to kind of go into a little bit more in depth on, is the purge command. Um, you can actually access this command just by typing it in um, on the model space here if you do have the dynamic input turned on, or you can type it in on the command line. Uh, when you hit enter, what you're prompted is, is this purge dialog box. And what this does, it shows you all different items that you can purge. And what purge does, it tries to remove any unused items such, such as block definitions, layers, um, line types, uh, anything you see there, materials, plot cells. And um, it, it's very advantageous if you're trying to reduce the size of files. Um, oftentimes, folks have a bunch of different things, uh, elevations, everything on one model space just because it's convenient to copy out of, I've seen, or um, they just kind of use it as a, a template and then they can kind of um, draft new drawings off of. Um, and when you have those large files, you end up getting a bunch of objects, uh, layers, line types that are unused. What this will do is go through the entire model, the entire drawing, and basically look for these um, blocks or layers. And what you notice here is this particular drawing has 17 unused layers. And the reason for that is if I were to go in here and open up my layers palette, and I'm, I'm trying to open up a new layer here, and I happen to click a few different times and don't notice it, or for whatever reason I'm using layers that I thought I was going to use at one point but don't actually end up using them, what this is going to allow me to do is when I go into the purge command, I'll be able to individually select the, the layers that I want to purge, or I can just hit this purge all button. And what this will do is remove anything that is um, on these drop times, whether it be line types that are not being used or layers. And I added in a bunch of these just to, so we can have a representation. If I wanted to move, um, remove just this one uh, line type, for example, I could hit purge, and from there it will be removed from my list no longer there. Or if I wanted to uh, just say, uh, hey, honestly, I don't actually need any of these. Uh, this is kind of uh, overwhelming. I have seen where folks have a lot of information there. Um, you can always just hit this purge all button. What it'll do, um, anytime that it actually uh, goes purge all, it'll rescan. So in a sense, you might have to click this a few times. It'll try to remove some, and then when it rescans, it notices, oh, wow, that didn't, I didn't see this layer the first time. So um, it'll give you that option again. I didn't see this textile the first time. And once you actually go through, you'll see that there are no more drop downs. That lets me know that all this unused information is being removed. Um, uh, you do have the option to confirm which item is being purged. Um, a lot of the times you have the visual here, so I don't necessarily actually ever check that box. For some folks, they may want that. Um, you can purge nested items, which are items within other items. And um, orphan data, which is stuff that has been carried over from different versions that isn't um, actually used in the in the drawing anymore. So um, this is a very neat thing. It'll reduce the, the, the file size uh, pretty dramatically depending on how many objects you do have um, within the drawing. Uh, so that's a really cool one. Uh, another one that we like to stress on to folks is actually the dash purge command. And um, a lot of the times people ask what's the difference. Um, what this one does, it, it initiates actually from the command line or from the dynamic input here. Um, so all, you're, you're given an option to basically um, purge out a, a lot of these different um, objects or different styles. And one that we usually like to focus on is regapps. 
commonly mistaken for registered applications. It actually uh, is unregistered applications, what it represents. And what regapps are, um, they're small embedded codes from different applications or objects. These programs, um, like Civil 3D, for example, if you were to, if you have a colleague who uses that and puts them in the drawings and you open it up in AutoCAD, these programs would attach an extended entity uh, data, which is also known as X data. The, um, the, in order for AutoCAD to store this information and be able to retrieve it from the object, so in order for it to actually display this object, it would be given a registered application ID, and um, that's how it references it. Um, these random IDs get associated with the drawing, and then from there increase the size, and depending on how many you have, it can um, actually decrease command um, execution speed, um, it, it'll decrease the, the speed of doing anything within the drawing. So um, a lot of times there are folks who will go in there, clear them out, and they'll have thousands of registered applications. Um, so one thing that we always do is uh, kind of click on this button here. We'll hit regapps. From here it'll enter the name to purge. We don't actually want to enter any of the names. We want it to kind of scan through most of this drawing and see if there are any things that are being left behind. Um, once we hit enter, and um, it'll ask us to verify again if we want to say yes or no to each one of the objects being removed. In this instance, we don't want to verify. And um, what it'll do is go through and hopefully delete any registered applications. And, and these are, uh, for example, if you were to receive a, a block from someone who um, created the block in Civil 3D and opened it up in AutoCAD, and you remove the block, you think you're all set. Um, this information, the X data is actually left behind, and that's what we're seeing here. Um, this command will end up going through and removing any of that. Um, and uh, it's very useful, uh, especially if you're using XREFs. Um, even if you attach an XREF to this file um, and you think that you've removed anything that you, that you didn't need, um, that X data actually gets copied onto the host uh, or cloned, in a sense, onto the host drawing. So even if you remove that XREF, um, that, that X data is actually still um, sh displaying within this uh, current drawing. So it's very important to remove these. As mentioned, if you do get to the point where you have thousands of these, or you don't necessarily do this very frequently, or you see files from someone who doesn't do this very frequently, it's always good practice to kind of get that out of the way and um, hopefully uh, increase the performance within the drawing. So another command that we'll give out a, a try to is overkill. And um, what this command does is uh, just another cleanup tool. It's very good for 2D line work, which um, a lot of folks who use AutoCAD are using, uh, in a sense, the 2D um, workspace, not necessarily 3D features. Um, it removes any duplicate or overlap overlapping lines. Uh, it could be arcs, polylines, uh, anything of the like. And um, it'll it not only remove those overlapping objects, but in some instances, replace them for polylines, where it seems where it'd be more fitting for that. Um, for exa an example of this would be if you're creating a rectangle and you use uh, four separate line segments. Um, at that point, it would try to convert that rectangle into uh, one solid polyline rectangle. Or if you have end-to-end um, -end lines, so uh, line drawing, five different line segments connecting together end-to-end, uh, -to -end, um, it would turn that in, into one continuous line. Um, in some instances, folks don't want that, um, and you do have the option to kind of uh, not do that. Um, for example, if they're trying to dimension it for some reason or another, that they need to have those line segments. but um, for the most part, what this command will do is uh, all we want to do is either control all, uh, control A to select all the all the objects, or if you only want a um, partial part of this drawing to be overkilled, you can just select whatever you feel, and then um, you would want to type in overkill in the command line and hit enter. From here, you're prompted with the delete duplicate objects dialog box. By default, um, it'll actually come in this way. Uh, these checked and uh, these options checked and these unchecked. Um, you can't ignore object properties. So if um, you're looking at a particular color or layer that you don't want affected, you can actually um, manipulate this. I personally um, don't really um, care for this, as I, I would have different ways to manipulate that if I needed to. Um, you'll also notice that by default, the tolerance is a very precise, very high in a sense. So um, anything that's that's even um, remotely on top of each other is going to be either removed or um, uh, combined into a polyline, as mentioned. And the options here prompted to you um, kind of allow you to manipulate this command a little bit further. The maintain associative objects would be, um, as you're cleaning this up, please make sure that you keep all the hatches intact. 
Um, so that's always a good one to have checked off. The combined collinear objects were aligned end to end. Um, this would be, as I mentioned previously, um, where you have line segments um, uh, end to end um, combining to be uh, this command will basically combine them into one continuous line or polyline. Uh, co combine collinear objects that partially overlap. This will basically, anything that I draw on top of each other that represent the exact same information will be combined into one uh, line. And then um, optimize segments within polylines. So that's, uh, again, um, if we happen to draw something that creates an, out, an object that could be polylined, um, it would attempt to do that. Um, so once I do that and hit OK on this entire drawing, we'll notice that it'll go through and uh, very quickly um, find 5,991 of these. Um, 35 were on a lock layer, which is uh, an important, actually, uh, piece of information there. Um, just because if you're running the overkill command and you notice, like, hey, this is something, um, there are certain objects that I don't want to be affected by this, um, you definitely want to make sure that those uh, are on a locked layer as it won't go in there and affect those. It won't uh, manipulate anything that's on a, a locked layer. Um, but um, So that's why I set up a few of those there. Uh, you'll notice that it, de it deleted 15 duplicate um, objects and not 299 overlapping objects or segments. Um, on a grand scale, it's kind of very tough to see uh, how it affected it. But one thing that we can try to do is just basically draw a line here. And then I'll draw a line directly over it, but not necessarily finished. So as you can tell here, if I select it, I do have two lines. If I um, select this, and type in the overkill command. Um, I have all my lines checked off, so the one that where they partially overlap, based off of this tolerance, should be removed. And um, as we can tell here, now that I select it, I have just one line. And um, this is very important if we are drafting. A lot of times you'll draw out a line, try to see um, where it all matches up, and you kind of almost forget about it. And over an entire um, drawing here, or site plan, or elevations, or anything, you might have hundreds or thousands of these lines that um, that you've created that you've kind of completely disregarded or um, didn't really have the time to go back and remove. Um, so you're increasing the file size where it's not necessary. Um, what this command will allow us to do is kind of go back, remove all that, and um, hopefully clear up our drawing in a very quick manner. So that that's a very useful tool. Um, another one that I uh, kind of like to let folks know about is the audit command. And um, all we want to do is just activate the command from the command line. And um, it's only going to prompt us with uh, an option of either fix the errors or not. Um, this should be a fairly clean drawing, so I don't think that will run into any issues. But um, we'll actually see. It does, yep, so it didn't find any errors here. Um, So th what it's going to do is just basically try to look through any type of inconsistent information, see if there's any errors that are found within the file. Um, and if there are, um, usually that's pointing to something as far as corruption within the file. So you, um, when running the audit command, you don't necessarily want to see errors. That's usually pointing to something that, that either the workflow that folks are currently using or the objects that they're using are causing issues. Um, there are instances where you go into a file and, and you audit it and um, you have a lot, 1,600 or 2,000 uh, of errors. And then at that point, it's it's probably really good to start using this feature a lot more frequently. Um, I know personally, if we're working on files, this will be the one of the first commands I'll try. And I let folks know if you can do this even one time a week, it'll, it'll definitely help in um, mitigating the amount of uh, errors you're finding in your files. Um, let's see. And so uh, those are a couple uh, easy ways to um, clean up the drawing. There is also a command Delcon that um, I would normally go into, but uh, I haven't seen where too many folks have had issues with this. All it does, it goes through and kind of um, similar to the uh, overkill command, I'd select the objects that I'd want to run the Delcon or delete constraints command on. And, um, the, uh, and for the most instances, uh, yeah, no constraints were deleted, but this would kind of go through if so folks have set up constraints and files that they've uh, inherited or um, uh, for one reason or another that someone set that up. Um, this would kind of go through and uh, remove that. As I mentioned, though, not too many times have I seen um, issues with that. Um, to get into the next kind of way to troubleshoot some issues, I have, we always hear um, 
folks come in and mention, I I've lost my file, I can't recover it, there's no way that I can get that information back. And um, to, for, some, for some reasoning, folks might think like, oh, this, these are just lines on a paper. We at Technical Support understand that it's not just lines, it's in a sense a lot of hours that were invested into this and trying to find a way to recover these drawings, this information is pretty vital. It could be uh, thousands of dollars on the line in a sense, um, depending on uh, how much information was lost. And understanding how you can recover these files is very important. Um, by default, um, AutoCAD will create a .bat file, and, um, and backup files are created basically manually in most instances when you click save and exit out of the program, but um, there will also be generated any time that you open up. So if I go to my webinar folder here where I have this interface drawing, you'll notice that, you know, should probably, one thing that I want to actually show first before we do that is the autosave option feature here. In uh, AutoCAD, we have um, automatic save files that are created within a time interval. By default, the time is set up to 10 minutes. Um, what I wanted to do is make sure that I manipulated this just so I can have an automatic save file to kind of work around with for you folks. Um, what this does is anytime that you click uh, save on the drawing and then um, manipulate the drawing in one way or another, uh, so you have to have this asterisk up here, which lets you know the drawing has been changed and it hasn't been saved. So if I were to save this, for example, and then manipulate this drawing, so um, I moved this guy around or I made a copy. Now, within five minutes of that last alteration that I made, after I manually saved, the autosave feature kicks in. What this does, it's going to try to create that um, autosave file for you just in case any information is lost. Um, this is just in case folks create something, they've been working, they saved something, made some changes uh, shortly after, and then walks away from the computer or something. Um, and then from there, the program closed out and they don't have access to that file. Um, what it's gonna do, is gonna default to the temp location. Um, you can actually find this. Uh, it's gonna be... What I can do is just basically show you here. What, it, what it's going to do is going to default to your auto save file location. And um, this is a great article that we normally like to bring up to folks, um, just understanding AutoCAD uh, backup and auto save files. And um, what it's going to do is going to default to your temporary file location by default on the um, options folder there. But um, one thing that we can do in order to, so here it is. One thing we can do to get to that temp location is a cool little trick if you go to the uh, uh, file explorer and just type in percent temp uh, percent and then hit enter it'll find it'll automatically navigate you toward um, this location here on your computer where uh, these files are being stored one way that you can search from is by type um, by default they're gonna um, search by folder first but one thing that I always like to do is go by date modified and this is gonna let me know exactly all types of files that have been entered here or saved here and the one thing that I want to do is look for the uh, either user interface sv uh, dollar sign and this is going to be an autosave file that was created or um, one that's similar and you'll notice that the day modified on this guy was uh, about 1 36 p.m. Uh, this is basically one that was generated earlier um, one thing that I can do to, in order to recover this file is uh, first thing I want to do is copy it out of this location and the reason for that being is if I were to change the extension, which is what we want to do in order to recover it, it's just going to give me a file in this location, then I got to look for it. What I want to do is make sure that I have it in the exact place where I'm going to want it. So I'll go back to this location here and I'll paste it. And um, all I want to do is change this extension from .sv dollar sign to .dwg. From there, this is actually now an a valid file. Um, it's, it was last time saved or created at 1.36 p.m. And um, this I, I can basically go into the program and use. It'll save me a whole bunch of time from trying to either recover the existing corrupt file or um, for whatever reason you lost that information, you're able to kind of go back in there. One important thing, thing to think about with autosave files, the second that I actually go in here and um, uh, I save this file uh, manually, it will be removed from my temp directory. Um, so that previous one, it will probably still be displaying here just because um, this is one from 
uh, a couple sessions ago, but the most recent one that was generated will actually be removed once I hit uh, save on the on the computer manually. So the next time that I I move this around, edit this again in five minutes because um, that's what my uh, minutes between saves is set to. Um, I will get another one generated. It's, the reason for that is you don't want a, a temp file directory to to expand to extraordinary amounts. So anytime that you actually go back into the drawing and save it manually, that one gets removed, and then the next one will be generated when that situation gets brought up. Um, uh, you, you can change this all the way down to one minute if you wanted to. Um, I don't necessarily recommend that just because um, <laughs> you, it'll be saving a bunch of files in and out. But um, if it is something that you want to pretend uh, uh, protect the drawing in a sense, you can definitely do that. Um, this AC dollar sign file that we saw there as well, those are just uh, AutoCAD cache files that are created there. Um, so anytime that a, a save is created or anything like that, the cache file will be sent here as well. But um, the main ones that we want to look for are the .sv dollar signs. Um, from there, you're, you're able to kind of restore any type of autosave file just by changing that extension. Another way that you can recover files, uh, as I was kind of um, referring to before, was the .backs. And these files are generated uh, within the program, uh, the folder location where the original file is. So this user interface file it happens to be in my webinar folder here. Um, the .back file will be created there as well. And um, for these, it's the exact same thing. Uh, if I change that .back extension to a .dwg, I'll end up getting a, an actual usable AutoCAD drawing. Um, obviously, with the same name being displayed here, sometimes I'll go in here and just change the name a bit um, before actually converting this to DWG, um, just so you don't get the get prompted with a message. But um, one thing we can do, it'll let me know, hey, um, if you change this, it might end up causing uh, some issues. You might not find this file usable. But as we know off of our um, kind of guide here, these files are compatible and are meant to be uh, extensions changed. So what I'll do is hit yes, and um, here it'll let me know, like, you already have one that's created as a user interface. Is it all right if we rename it as the second? I hit yes, and then there I have now um, two files that I can basically use to, in order to try to recover the information I may have lost. Um, you also notice these DWL and DWL2 files. Um, these are just drawing lock files. Uh, this lets me know that the file is currently opened um, within AutoCAD. So anytime you see those guys, if, um, uh, yeah, we'll save this good. And we'll exit out. These will, they'll, they'll disappear as soon as that file is basically closed. But you will see that an, another .back file was created. And um, that, that'll usually happen anytime I've noticed when you close the program. But, um, a really good thing to know, just in case you do uh, ever run into some issues, um, you, you're, you are able to recover those files. Alrighty, so um, another way that um, folks might actually see the .back file is um, their program crashes out and then on the next instance they're prompted with the if I could just type here. Ooh. This guy here, the uh, I I usually call it the recovering the recovery manager just because you do get that prompt here. But um, these are basically where you're prompted, hey, these are the backup files. And um, you'll be able to see them at, in, the, in a sense the exact same way um, and access them from here. But you can also, um, if trying to access files that for some reason you can't open, um, one thing that we always recommend to folks is if you open up a new drawing or if you had one already open, one thing you can do is uh, actually just type in recovery on the command line. recover on the command line. <laughs> and um, from there, you'll be prompted with the um, drawings themselves. And uh, this is a, a pretty good way to try to, if for some reason you, you receive the file and you can't open it within a particular version of the program, 
um, you, you, you received it, like, hey, normally I'd be able to kind of just open this. My colleague was able to open this. Um, what could be going on? Um, you would try to run the recover command and see if um, any of these files uh, would actually work. So, for example, if I was trying to recover this one here, uh, actually, I'll try this one just because uh, I have that other one open. Um, what it's going to do, it's going to go through and audit that file, see if I'm able to open it. It's going to tell me no errors were recovered in the database, and um, it's going to open that file back up for me. Um, this will let me know that if there were any audits, uh, it'll basically audit the file, see if there was anything that it noticed. And if it did, it would actually let me know right there um, from the beginning. So one of the very um, quick ways to check if, if you're able to kind of open a drawing that, that's very tough to or for some reason is causing the program to cache, the first thing we'll try to do is run a recover on it. Um, another thing that uh, we, in a sense, try to do would be the recover all command um, if that one fails. And what the difference between the two is recover all um, will actually open up the file, run an audit, see if there's any data that can be retrieved, retrieve as much data as possible, save the file back into its location where it was originally stored, and then um, uh, basically close out the file from the, the program. And what it does is the .back file that's generated, so that backup file that's generated in the same location as the, the containing um, folder with the files, that, that file becomes a previous um, file. So for example, if I had this um, user interface drawing, um, I know that I have a, a version of it saved here, um, this user interface 5344. If I were to run a recover all on this, this version of it becomes the .back file, and then the new version of the pro of the file that gets saved by the command would become the uh, sort of uh, stand-in file. So in order to kind of see what I mean, we'll run recover all. This is going to let me know exactly what the program is doing. Um, hey, th these files are um, being saved. This file is going to be overriding the original one but the original one is going to become a backup file just in case you need to do, you do need to refer back to that. So as you can tell there, um, it displayed for a little bit. It went through, it'll give me a log file of everything it audited and um, this is this is pretty great. Um, if uh, there were errors, it would let me know exactly what error happened or um, what might have been an issue during the whole process. Um, this is a fairly clean file, so uh, I wasn't expecting to see anything um, on this. But uh, this will let you know right away where um, your your file may be failing. Um, it, it, and in some instances, if you're not able to run this command, it'll let you know more about that. It might be something that the file is beyond repairable. A lot of times we'll get files and folks are um, frustrated just because they can't open it or um, they're not able to. And, and it could just be that the file is beyond corruption uh, in the sense of beyond recovery. And um, this command usually will go through and if it can't even open it within this one and the program cancels out, it's not looking um, too promising. It might be that the, the file was created in a program not supported by Autodesk. Um, and a lot of folks do um, use third party add-ins and all different things because you are able to customize the program pretty easily. Um, so that'll be a, usually a very good telltale sign of what's going on um, with this command here. Alrighty, so we'll close this guy up. Um, and then just one more thing, as, I guess, as far as um, uh, ways that you can try to troubleshoot issues that might be going within the file. Um, if you're not able to execute commands or they seems to be very slow, um, a lot of times we'll, we'll mention, hey, I have all the system requirements, graphics card is up to date, um, I've kept up with everything and um, I'm still running into uh, numerous issues. Um, one thing that you can try to do is uh, write block or uh, w block command within AutoCAD. And um, all we're trying to do in this instance is remove the drawing from the, uh, with its associations to the current um, drawing that's open and try to kind of uh, append it to a new drawing that might not have the issues you're experiencing. Um, so the way that I would do this is just type in w block on the on the command line or dynamic input, and um, from here you're prompt you're prompted with the right block dialog box. 
Uh, it'll give you a few different features here. And the, the one thing that we really want to do is um, we'll want to turn this into an object and we'll want to select the objects. Um, you can do the entire drawing if you wanted to. Um, I, I recommend just uh, basically selecting the um, objects that you think you really need or the ones that you do want in a new drawing um, just so you can minimize the chance of um, carrying that corruption through. So once I hit enter, um, I'll basically have uh, an option to choose where I want to save this file. Um, I, I can't save it here as new block, but uh, I think I already have one there, so I'll call this one new block 2. And um, this will let me basically choose the path where I want this new block to be created to, um, the name I want for it, and then insert units. I usually go unitless personally, um, just so I, I don't mess around with any any type of um, units that might be created within this personal drawing here that I have, especially if I inherited it from someone. Once I hit OK, um, it'll let you know, it'll give you a preview there that the block was created. And on a new drawing, um, all I want to do is type in insert. And uh, here you're prompted with the insert dialog box. Uh, I'll browse to the block I want to open. Um, if you've opened a block at a particular location, it'll default to that previous location. Um, so I hit new block two, and then this is just going to let me know places where I can insert it if I want to change the scale of it, the rotation, how I basically want to manipulate that block to display once it inserts into the model. Um, the insertion point you're allowed to choose anywhere on the screen. Um, for this um, particular issue, I'll just basically uncheck that and it'll default to zero, zero, zero or the origin. Um, the scale, I want it to be one to one on everything here. And um, once I hit OK, you may not see the file on uh, after the command was completed, but you can tell here that the command was completed. So all I want to do is hit zoom and extents. And from there, I see the, the objects that I selected from my previous um, file. What, I, what it, one thing you will realize is, um, regardless of what you try to select, obviously, um, everything will kind of come into the selection window as well, just because it is an object. So what we want to do is um, select this guy and we can hit explode. And from there now we have basically individual selected, selectable lines, everything as we had it previously. And um, in most instances, if you are having issues with that one particular drawing, um, this will take care of it. And I've seen where um, most folks don't necessarily know how to do that, but um, just because they don't think of, of creating a block of it and removing it from the environment would help out, but um, it is something that I, I would recommend to folks who attempt to to use as often as possible if they can't for some reason, um, if none of the cleaning works, none of the auditing, none of the recovery works on the file really to get the performance increase, give that a shot and see if um, uh, the association with that current drawing is what's causing the issue. Hey Alex, Hi, yep. this is Naman. Hey, uh, can I uh, suggest, well, I also use, uh, when I do the W block, I select the delete objects from the original file, so I know that the objects that I selected are uh, out completely. Otherwise, sometimes what happens is uh, if there are any proxy objects and things like that that don't go, uh, this way I, I know for sure, because I'm not going to save this file anyways, so uh, delete from drawing makes sure what, what I have exported out is the good amount uh, and that I want it exactly. And, and, and that's a great point, Armand. That's honestly uh, something that um, I, I would definitely recommend as well, just because, um, and, and something that I, I should have definitely mentioned, uh, uh, that was a great point. I, I think that um, once you remove those, you do know exactly what you carry through as well. Um, so if there was anything that you weren't expecting or um, you want to make sure that everything did go through as, as expected, um, that, that's, a, that's a great thing to do there. Yeah. And the one other thing that you were talking about, the recovery or uh, file that are not opening and things like that, the other thing I also do is is isolate the XREFs. So make sure that the XREFs aren't loaded. Um, and that way sometimes the file may open because it might not be opening or corrupting because of the XREF being loaded or being found. Yep. And um, if you folks did want to do anything like that, uh, as obvious, um, I don't have any XREFs in this file in particular. But um, you would do that just right here from the XREF manager. You could go in there, just basically detach any of those XREFs and try to uh, remove them. Or um, uh, so, yeah, that's another great point, Naman. That's a great. 
just because um, there are so many, uh, and this is something that we try to let folks know on the technical support side of things, is there's so many different things that could be contributing to a particular file not working as expected. And um, a lot of these instances is just trying to kind of check certain uh, things off of the list, certain things that might be causing it, just because if we can dwindle down to the point where it's something clearly within the file, a certain object or something like this, we can actually use features within the program to help us remove those, so create new ones um, and kind of helping everyone out there. And one way that we could do it, which actually makes a, a, a kind of a pretty good segue, is the quick select command, um, which is a, a pretty cool feature that I uh, love to let people know about just because it might be something that gets overseen. Um, you can see this on the properties palette. Um, and all, all you have to do is click here, and what it's going to do is going to allow you to single out certain features within um, the program, certain line work, uh, line types, layers, um, anything like this. Uh, what it would, when you click on the quick select, you get the dialog box, and you can choose what um, the selection is going to apply to. Um, right now, all we have as an option is the entire drawing, but um, well, one thing that I can do is, for example, if I wanted to see all the polylines in this entire drawing that were on... Uh, uh, yeah, we'll go by layer, uh, sure. And um, so you can choose all different types of operators, whether equals, doesn't equal, um, and anything like this, and um, we'll choose a different um, selection scheme for anything that you're trying to single out. Uh, as you can see, this is a fairly large drawing, and if you're trying to just look at a particular um, selection of items or anything like that, um, this feature comes in pretty handy. Once I hit that, it lets me know of all the polylines in this um, model that are on that by layer um, or based off of my circumstances in the properties palette, I'll see all the different polylines here. Um, now that I do have something selected, uh, if I go back into the quick select, from here I'm actually able to now decipher between if I want to apply this to the entire drawing or if I want to just go off of the items that are currently selected. So it allows you to basically go into that um, previous selection that you made and I'm kind of uh, dwindle it down even further. You're, you're able to kind of look into it um, a, a little bit further and be like, all right, so now that I have all these polylines selected, I want ones that are a certain material or a certain thickness um, or that have a certain length or a anything like that. Um, and uh, it, this usually helps out in, in any type of drawing that you're trying to work with that um, that that is fairly large and um, you're trying to kind of navigate to and, and find certain things that you created a long ago or things that your colleagues are mentioning are there, but <laughs> you for some reason can't find them. Um, I know a lot of times we run into issues like that. So um, this is a, a very cool feature. Uh, once you do have these items selected, another cool little trick is just um, kind of going back here and going to the isolate and hide objects. This will allow me to, all right, have all these objects selected and I don't really want to see anything else. I want to just be able to work with these um, particular line types at the moment. I can actually isolate these objects and then um, it'll let me know. Uh, I do, um, I basically have anything that I, I had on my previous selection here, and now I can uh, work with it. Um, I can always go end object isolation, and it'll bring everything else back. Um, or if I did want to, for example, just uh, I don't really want to see these uh, particular lines for whatever reason, I can actually go back down here and um, just choose to hide objects. And this will kind of let me um, work with what I need. If I, if I want to remove anything else, uh, a larger um, part of this diagram, I can uh, just hide any of this stuff and from there I'm able to just kind of work on what I need to. If I wanted to redesign this baseball field, I could uh, edit just basically the things that I wanted to work on. And um, a lot of the times uh, it is a very quick and easy way to kind of manipulate the information. Um, it just goes along with the quick select. Uh, I select what I want to work on or anything like that and I can isolate anything else or if I want to remove most of these objects that I'm not really currently working in, I can um, kind of uh, isolate those or uh, vice versa, any way that I want to affect that. One, uh, another cool little trick that um, uh, might be of, of use would be the multiple command. A lot of times um, folks are kind of creating lines and they're doing a lot of line work and um, they're only going to be using that one command for uh, X amount of time, and you'll see them kind of go in here and uh, they'll create their lines, they hit enter, then they have to reinitialize the command and uh, hit enter again, reinitialize the command, or in some instances we have folks who create the line command, um, do their line work, hit enter, then restart the line command um, just to kind of draw line work. 
um, a cool command would be the multiple. Um, you just hit enter. It'll ask you the, um, the command name to basically repeat. And um, you can't type in line. Uh, I've also found that you can um, use the alias of the command. So L would work just as fine um, for this command as well. And um, from there, I can basically create lines. And then I don't even have to hit enter or anything like that. Once I hit the edit, I can basically go back and continue on. It just re reinitializes the command, and I, I can just continue drawing as many lines as far away as I need to. Um, and the only time that it'll actually stop is when I escape out of the command. Um, so that's a pretty cool one, uh, just uh, one that if you're drawing, again, use, and you can do that with any command. It doesn't necessarily have to be lines. Um, it could be anything on um, circles, uh, anything you can think of if you're doing um, a something very often or frequently um, within your drafting. Um, it's something that you can use uh, pretty regularly. But um, I don't know if we have any more questions. Um, I did get through most of the things that I wanted to, but um, if there are any questions, Amana, we can definitely try to um, kind of single those up. Yeah, I'm, uh, somebody, uh, let me see, uh, they have asked why does, uh, Adam was asking actually, why does Purge miss items? Why doesn't it get everything on the uh, on the initial purge command here so my, my understanding is that um, what it's going to do is uh, basically going to purge base everything off of the last command so for example if I've been working in this for a while that the model hasn't regenerated um, what it's going to do is going to go off of the last instance of the program once I run the command and execute it once what it's going to do is basically regenerate the model and then from there it might actually find stuff that it didn't find in the first instance um, so that, that's the only way that I can think of that that um, basically affects that. Um, but you will know once it goes through everything, once the dialog box kind of grays out your purge all um, at the bottom here. Uh, okay, okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I had also mentioned basically that uh, sometimes if you are trying to purge a layer or something, it might be used in like a settings in dimension or something like that, and that's why it doesn't go through and purge that out because it's connected to some item that is being used. So that could be an issue too. Yep. Yep. That, 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 that's definitely gone on before as well. Yep. Do, do, did we have anything else? Uh, anything? Yeah, let me check. Uh, one more was um, somebody had mentioned that hey, sometimes, the, you know, if the lines are off on Z axis, um, you know, overkill command doesn't work. So they have to flatten it first. And then overkill is that, uh, or does the overkill work with z-axis commands too? So the the overkill command would only do 2D. So um, the z-axis would an inter kind of bring in that third dimension, so it won't work. That in a sense acts as an elevation. So the only way that you would want to actually work that is, um, I know a lot of times what what I would do is just do quick select, and if I know a bunch of objects that have that z, I can basically go in here, and if it's like a uh, I think 3D polyline, it gives me a vertex of Z. And if it does have a value greater than zero, what I can do is select all those objects and then remove them. So if I had uh, any lines that had a, a vertex of Z greater than zero, um, it'll select them. And then from there, all I have to do is go into the properties palette and um, change that Z to zero. And then it'll allow me to overkill those if, if it does um, have that. Thank you. Um, that's, uh, I think, uh, I don't see, oh, I'm getting more questions. Let me check and uh, see what else. Uh, yeah, so overkill did work on 2D only, so. No, I don't see anybody else having that. Uh, somebody is asking, when I zoom all, my project disappears because I have other items way out there. Is there a way to delete those or would block out, W block, be the best to use um, so if, if it's zooming out all the way out um, what it's what I would do is actually uh, so for example if I drew a line um, let me see if I can do this here real quick if I drew a line all the way out here um, once I hit zoom extents it's gonna basically try to take into account that line no matter how far away it is um, once I hit control all it's gonna select all the objects and uh, one thing that I would do is if I see most of my objects here, I can do a can, uh, select shift and it'll only leave this one here. So if I um, select that guy, hit shift, it's going to only leave the one that's really far out in space and delete that one. 
Um, but if you did want to, and, and if you can't zoom in far enough, I have seen where people have it uh, hundreds of, of, of hundreds of millions of units away from the origin, and it's so far out, or you can't even see the objects. You can um, W block out the main piece there and kind of bring it into a new drawing, and that will kind of remove that instance from happening. Uh, so the other one curveball I can throw at uh, compared, you know, when you're talking about W block, uh, the problem with W block, not a problem, but something that you have to think about also is let's say if you had layouts and uh, you had stuff set up on the layouts, like uh, viewports and title blocks, um, how would you transfer those? I know it's one way of doing it, but can I put you on the spot? Um, so, uh, a, probably the only way that, um, that, that, that that is the problem because you basically get a whole new drawing in that instance. One way that you could try to do is using the CUI, um, not the CUI, the, uh, I think it's, uh, let me see if I can, <laughs> the, can I, uh, yeah, yeah, you can definitely go ahead. I would basically try to pull the layouts from the previous drawing and try to pull them into the one. center. Yeah, yeah, design center. That's what it was. Uh, uh, basically, try and um, pull those layouts from the previous one, and because um, if I were to navigate to this drawing, for example, in in design center, which is DC, uh, uh, this guy here. Um, if I click on this, I, I basically have all, oh, I want to actually click on this drawing here. I, I basically have all of the information available to me here um, from this particular drawing. All I want to do is navigate to the file here. And um, from here, I have layouts. So if I click on the layouts, I have this one, for example, uh, site, site grading, plan 204, plan 304. All I got to do is drag this guy. And Drop it in the middle of the drawing space. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Usually I'll try to get the little arrow, but it wasn't working for me. But then, then I basically end up getting that um, that layout available in a new drawing that I didn't necessarily have that. So that, that's a really cool um, feature, that Design Center, just because uh, it, you can also pull all types of information, as you can tell from um, from the drawing. Uh, you can take uh, layer information, anything that you've pre previously created, you, you'd, be, you'd be able to kind of use um, within any new model, any new drawing. Oh, it's already here. Uh, yeah, that was a great point, Norman. You, you put me on the spot there. Uh, definitely, uh, yeah, that's a that's a great way to kind of show folks the design center, which is a very underutilized tool. I yeah, think. yeah. Walker did a full session on design center, uh, and, and uh, you may want to look it up on the YouTube playlist uh, that gets emailed. So uh, there's a really awesome tool. Yeah, yeah, and. Um, and that's what I was mentioning on that YouTube playlist. We have anything and everything you can think about AutoCAD, things that you wouldn't even imagine about um, that you would use that could be advantageous on your day-to-day, -day. and Design Center is definitely one of those. So we're up for time, so why do you want to throw up the last poll, please? Uh, yep, I'll definitely throw up that last poll. Alrighty, so let me see if you folks can see that. Um, did you learn something new today? This is usually the one that we like to kind of send out at the end. Um, a lot of the times uh, uh, there are some uh, some subjects that folks are, are more familiar with than others, but we'll usually try to delve into a little bit deeper or something that you may have not known before, um, but hopefully you did learn something new. It looks like about 67% of folks have voted. If you could take the time to vote it, we'd definitely appreciate it. Alrighty, so I'll close this guy out, and we'll share the results. So about 93% of you folks um, have mentioned that you did learn something new. Only 77% of folks voted, but um, for the other 13 to 23% of you that haven't, um, we hope you did learn something new, and um, we hope to see you folks next time. For myself and Naman, who, uh, who's a, a great guy on the forums, you'll probably run into him. Um, we appreciate your time, and have a great day.